Curtis. Hungry stomachs everywhere know that America truly is a burger nation. That, my friend, is flame broiled right there. Grease up the grill and slap down a patty. Because we're sinking our teeth into the country's absolute best burgers. My mouth is watering right now. Mm. I'm Todd Fisher, family man, chef, and proud burger-loving American. Feed me burgers. Feed me. I've worked my whole adult life in the food industry. Woo! Look at this scimitar. And now I'm traveling the United States to find the ultimate burger joints. That looks like a wicked awesome cheeseburger, man. Call it my burger bucket list. These aren't just restaurants or eateries. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. These are burger temples. If you call yourself a burger fan, you can't miss them. This is my journey. This is my country. This is the United States of Burgers. There's no food more quintessentially American than the hamburger. Basic ground beef shaped into a patty and placed on a bun, it's a simple idea that is simply irresistible. Our love affair with the burger started more than a century ago, and now it's more than just a meal. With burger festivals, societies, and even world records, it's a national obsession. Thin patties, thick patties, topped off, dressed up, on a grill, or dropped in grease. We devour them all. Restaurants across this country have their own take on this American classic. And I'm on a patriotic quest to find the most delicious burgers this great nation has on its menu. My hamburger bucket list begins here in New Haven, Connecticut, the birthplace of such American iconic inventions as the Frisbee, the submarine, and the lollipop. But I only care about one Connecticut creation, and that's why I'm here at Louie's Lunch the birthplace of the hamburger. Historic! While some historians trace its origins to Germany's port town of Hamburg, and others credit chefs from the 1904 World's Fair, many culinary experts credit this New Haven institution as the burger's true birthplace. Back in 1900, patty pioneer Louis Lassen laid a foundation for burger perfection. A quarter pound of ground beef on white toast, with tomato and onion as the only choice for topping. Would you do anything different to that burger? No. Nothing. Perfection is. It is what it is. It's no frills. Perfect. They do it just the way they do it. Either you like it or you don't like it. I like it. How are you guys? I just nailed two cheeseburgers, so Killed how could them. I be better? Well, with three. Well, well <laughs> there are some lines I don't want to cross. I'm here because I'm on my burger bucket list. You are here at the cradle of civilization for the hamburger. Whoa. You are. The cradle of civilization <laughs> for the right. hamburger. This is the place that changed the world forever. It did. At Louis Lunch, I'm surrounded by the hamburger's delicious history, where generations of satisfied customers are carved into the walls, and rich, beefy flavor is burned right into the grill. But there's one thing you'll never see offered here. Ketchup. The ketchup bottle. Can't, you can't get it. Yeah, no. Well, you wouldn't put ketchup on a steak, right? There you go. Wow, that's deep. That is deep. <laughs> this landmark of delicious American ingenuity is relying purely on the patty. So I'm excited to meet the guy who's been tossing them into the cooker for the last 35 years. Jeff Lassen, great-grandson of the restaurant's namesake. So it was your great-grandfather that started the, the hamburger revolution? Yes. I was serving steak dinners from 1895 to 1900. And then a customer came in. He was in a great rush. My great-grandfather was tired of bringing the trimmings home. And he said, you know, what can I do with this? Uh, maybe I can put it through the chopper, put it between two slices of bread. And the hamburger was born. There it was. How do you know that this is the uh, the first place that the hamburger was born? Well, in the year 2000, we were inducted into the Library of Congress. Really? So, and we're the only one. So I'm at the epicenter of all things hamburger, expecting to see the mother of all grill tops. And instead... Thank God I'm not claustrophobic, man. Look at this space. A lot of times in a, in a, in a kitchen, right, you've got your two or three step zone that you work in. But you got, like, you just spin in a circle. Yeah. And it's done. I got my own little space here. <laughs> hey, can I do this? There you go. Holy.
Hopefully that was hot. <laughs> Tell me about the, the, the patties themselves, the balls. What, what's, your, what's your science behind grinding? It's actually our own special uh, blend of five different mixes. That is really lean, and it looks like a pretty coarse grind, too. Mm -hmm. Almost like what we would call a chili grind, so it's got a little more substance to it. It's not quite as fine. A great burger begins with the beef, and Louis uses a top-secret blend of five choice cuts to create its famous patty. So you take your balls and you squish them. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> take your balls little, and you squish them. A little bit of salt and pepper. If they want onion, slice of onion. Ooh, the onion cooks on the burger. Yeah. And then Ooh, what we do is just pick it right up. A little spatula, and there you go. Jeff's not using any ordinary burger racks. These are the original gas-fired, cast-iron, upright broilers his grandfather used more than 100 years ago to cook patties to the perfect temperature. So now you can order a te whatever temperature you want. You can. Uh, we prefer here. There's some hesitance in that. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer medium rare. Medium rare really is the perfect way to eat your burger. Medium well, well done. And you've cooked out all of that great flavor, all the natural juices that are supposed to be in there. Well, we're going to flip this now. It's time. And as the heat rises, all those juices that are going to kind of kind of base back over the burger going down the other side. Absolutely. Very nice. I think your grandfather was absolutely brilliant. I think he was a little ahead of his time. I think right on time. <laughs> Speaking of time, it's toast time. It's toast time. I've seen plenty of chefs with their own spin on the ordinary pre-packed backyard barbecue style bun. But Louis' lunch never even had the option. The hamburger bun, as we know it today, wasn't invented until the 1920s. 20 years after Louis Lunch launched the Burger Revolution using their own simple toasted white bread. Oh, with great expectation. Come on, toast! <laughs> Voila. Just like that. And there it is. Louis' original hamburger. Served the same way since 1900. Absolutely. That's incredible. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Medium rare. Nice and juicy. The onion cooked right on the patty, the toast. All right, I'm going in. All right, enjoy. Mmm, it's so moist. Really deep, rich beef flavor. That's what it should be about. That is lean and mean. Delicious. You can see the, the juice is dripping. It doesn't need another thing. The onion's nice and rich on there. Sometimes with a burger bun, right? Too much top bun. You're getting too much bread. The toast is, is new to me, old to you. Mm -hmm. But sure. I like that. In a world of covering it with toppings on everything, there's something about starting with the original. Oh, the one and only. I feel like I'm on a history lesson as well as this great eating expedition. Well done, my friend. Thank you, sir. I've tasted the original at Louis. Now I'm off to the Windy City Institution, where burger perfection is summed up in three little words. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Historians credit Lionel Sternberger with creating the first cheeseburger in 1924 in Pasadena, California. Almost 90 years later, the cheeseburger is alive and well in thousands of restaurants, bars, and joints across the country. Tucked away underneath this Chicago street is a burger mecca. The Billy Goat Tavern, home to one of the most iconic cheeseburgers on the planet, the Cheeseburger. Double cheese, double cheese, double cheese, double cheese, the best. You guys are actually here on a food tour. Yes, we are. Well, what are you having here? Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. cheeseburger. I'm here because of my burger bucket list. You, you have a bucket list now? Yeah, man, everyone's got to have a bucket list. Was part of the list growing that beard, first of all? Uh, actually, yeah. I kind of wanted to grow That made beard, makes man. sense. That's a nice beard. It's going on about 20 months right now. That's it? Yeah. This is like five years. <laughs> it's unlike any cheeseburger you've ever tasted. They will make you get a double. They browbeat people into it. It's, it's uniquely Chicago. Hungry Chicagoans have known about this hot spot since 1934, when Greek immigrant Bill Cianis opened up a tavern named after his pet goat. Just a few years later, that goat became infamous in the Windy City, and this tavern began shaping more than just waistline. It also twisted the fate of Chicago's most beloved franchise. So you gotta tell me, I need to know a little bit more about the curse the of the Billy Goat. Yeah. 1945, and believe it or not, the Cubs are in the World Series. 
Sam Cyanus's uncle Bill took his pet goat to Wrigley Field. He had two tickets. Who takes their goat to a, to a baseball game? Phil Wrigley, who ran the team, said they're not getting in. Billy and the goat go back to the saloon, and as they're sitting there with these two sad tickets, and so Billy put a curse on the Cubs. I like it. People still come in here and go, please, take the curse <laughs> off my Cubs. And so, lo, these many decades later, the Cubs have never played in a World Series. Coming up, it's a marriage made in food heaven when burger unites with cheese. So I, can I slap this one down? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Living a dream, baby. Plus, I check out a burger joint whose signature move isn't flipping patties. It's dipping them into a pot of vintage grease. Feed me burgers. Feed me. Americans eat more than 13 billion burgers a year, and a growing number of those are cheeseburgers. And no place does them like Chicago's famed Billy Goat Tavern. Though locals have relished in Billy Goat's super thin sandwiches since it opened in 1934, it became a pop culture icon when one of Saturday Night Live's recurring sketches paid tribute to Billy Goat's intense ordering process. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger! I grew up watching those skits and wanted to eat those cheeseburgers. So this isn't just a check off my bucket list. It's living out my childhood fantasy. Yes, sir. Uh, I got I to gotta have a cheeseburger. Double cheese the best. Just a cheeseburger. Double cheese. Just, just a cheeseburger. No cheeseburger. Double cheese the best. Why double cheese? The best. Double cheeseburger the best. All right, double cheeseburger. All right, I want double cheese. Well, there it is. That's how you order at the Billy Go. You want a single? Get a double. Double's the best. If I'm living out my dream, I can't simply wait for my patties to grill. I've got to jump behind the counter with the founder's grandnephew, Bill Sienis, who's agreed to show me the secret of his family's success. I feel literally like a kid in a candy store right now. I grew up watching the skits about the cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. I'm actually standing in the place that the legends have stood. And, and here we are making them, Bill. What's, what's so special about this patty? Well, we get the, the beef and we grind it ourselves. And you can see it's got good marbling. It's very thin. I mean, paper, almost paper thin. That's incredible. Why so thin? To so cook it faster and to, to leave a nice uh, crust. Using chuck beef, a section of the cow's shoulder noted for its balance of meat and fat, Bill churns out nearly 1,500 razor-thin patties every day. At just two ounces each, they're small in size but big on flavor. The instant the meat hits the grill's heat, a chemical reaction between sugars and proteins takes over, producing both a brown-colored crust and an intensely appealing flavor. So I, can I slap this one down? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Living a dream, baby. Look, look how quickly they cook. Yeah, it starts uh, to sweat. And then we flip them. It's all in the wrist, baby. Look at that. Once you flip it, they just put the cheese on there. So American cheese, the American. perfect melting cheese for cheeseburger. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't melt away, it doesn't get oily and break down. It's just a nice, delicious, creamy cheese. American cheese may not be the most respected ingredient in the kitchen, yet when it comes to burgers, it's the holy grail. Unlike unprocessed cheeses that separate when heated, American cheese packs its own emulsifiers that allow for a smooth, uniform melt to perfectly coat any burger. Here's one of the best parts about this place. It doesn't matter who you are. President, governor, uh, you know, sports star, movie star, me. No plates. Not a single plate in the place. There you go. Pick up your cheeseburger. <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Double cheese the best. I head up to the old school fixin's bar where customers can add all the condiments and toppings they'd like. After choosing my own favorites, ketchup, mustard, whole onion slices, and dill pickles, it's eating time. This is it, the famous Billy Goat cheeseburger, double, double's best. It's, you can't help but say it once, they, once they, they pound it into your head. Look at that, just smiling at you. Come and eat me right there. I'm going in. Mmm. Little crust on the burger itself. Nice and creamy cheese in the middle. 
Oh my God, I thought the ordering was the most mind-blowing part of the Billy Goat Tavern, but the flavor of this cheeseburger is even more intense. This is like a dream come true. I'm in heaven right now. You, you were right. Double cheese the best. Well, everybody, when to come in, they know they don't have to look the menu. Just <laughs> they look for me. <laughs> you are the menu. Yes. What'd you like? <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. The Billy Goat was great. But there's another classic burger joint on my list, whose beloved flavors have stood the test of time in the South. Memphis, Tennessee is one of America's great food cities. Mouth-watering dry rubbed ribs, barbecue spaghetti, southern fried chicken, and a one-of-a-kind burger at Historic Dyer's on Beale. For a hundred years, they've been serving their delicious hamburgers in a very unique deep fry way. Dyer's isn't just a hamburger joint. It's a century-old Memphis institution made world famous by its signature double-double. A mouth-watering stack of two beef patties, each topped with cheese and fully cooked in ancient Greece. Yeah, that's right. The key to Dyer's flavor is their sacred hundred-year-old grease. So is this the best burger in town? It was love at first bite. Very nice. <laughs> Ever years. see it done like that before? No. Can you taste 1912 in that burger? Absolutely. Is it the best first bite of a burger you've ever had? I am having a very deep moment with this burger right now. A lucky hey, burger, burger, I tell ya. Coming up, I'm crashing the kitchen to see the patty-pounding, grease-dipping, burger-making process that's been filling Memphis stomachs for over a hundred years. This is like grandma greasy right here. I feel like I should pay some respect. And then I'm heading to Boston, the birthplace of the American Revolution, to join legions of meat lovers looking to build their own revolutionary burger. I like how you were the kid in the candy store, but you weren't the drunk kid in the candy <laughs> store. billion pounds, a full third of all the meat we produce in this country, makes its way through a grinder and onto a bun. We Americans are eating more burgers than ever, and Dyer's in Memphis, Tennessee is a good reason for that. They found burger success with a steadfast dedication to a deep frying tradition that cooks over 600 burgers every day. But in this crowd of Beale Street burger lovers, I see one customer is sporting a different Memphis must-have that I can't resist. Got my list in my pocket. Need a burger in my hand. There's only one way to heal my hamburger blues, and I'm betting that general manager Felix Vega, a 14-year seasoned veteran of the Dyer's tradition, holds the cure. I mean, this is it. This place is historic. Everyone will ask us, though, about the back of our shirts. Have you had your vitamin G today? And we always look at them, it's like, grease. Why, you know, what, what else would it be? So. <laughs> Very proud of the grease. Absolutely. The burger itself is actually cooked in the grease. You literally just drop it into a big pot of grease. Yes. I got to get back there and see this. Well, let's get you an apron because it's going to be really messy. You know? <laughs> let's let's get, do it. Let's do it. <laughs> This is it, though. This is the hundred-year-old grease this is, right this, here. This is the grease that everybody this talks about. This is like about. grandma greasy right here. Absolutely. I feel like I should pay some respect. I mean, just look in there. And the way it's just percolating right now, it's just saying, "Give me, feed me burgers. Feed me, Felix. Feed me. How on earth have you kept this grease alive for a hundred years? I mean, how does it not go bad? How does it not burn? What's the secret? Every morning when we get here, we strain the grease. OK. And then we season it every morning, sometimes two or three times a day. It depends on the volume of business. And do you have to add grease to it? or No, or? we never add grease to it. The hamburger meat that we use, it just tends to keep the grease going. Like it keeps it's, it's, feeding the monster. It, absolutely. The grease itself has been transported by a police escort in the two moves that we've made. I don't know any place on earth that does that. I mean, that is just so unique. Before dropping patties into the 300-degree bubble bath of grease, Felix adds hand-chopped onions and a quick splash of Dyer's secret ingredient. Can you tell me what that is? I would prefer not to. I'd, oh. like, I'd, like, to, I'd like to try to keep that a secret. While those flavors mix, the patties are prepped. Though most chefs prefer an 80-20 blend of lean meat to fat, 
Dyer's opts for a fattier 73 to 27 percent ratio. If you use a leaner beef, it'll actually soak the grease up because it doesn't. The, the beef doesn't have fat. Really? And I actually, I've 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 had. So it starts depleting, Grandma. Yes. Yeah. Dyer's Burger Blend is an American original, and it takes some unique tools to shape it. An ice cream scoop, a spatula, and a mallet. Perfect patty every time. There you go. That's pretty fun. I mean, very consistent, right? Right. Ah, jumper. Every scoop creates a uniform three-ounce patty of densely packed fatty beef, ready to be molded oh so delicately. So you take this spatula and this mallet. So you're not pounding it, you're pressing it. No, you're pounding it. Oh. You're, you're definitely pounding it. <laughs> and then you'll that looks take... like it just splatted on a windshield. If it was thicker, the outside would char, and the inside would still be rare. You can't come in and say, can I get a medium, medium rare? You just there... get it the way Dyer does it. Right. It almost looks like a jellyfish swimming through the grease right now. As the patties cook, Felix lays out the bun and packs on the toppings. Mustard, pickles, raw onion, and a heavy dash of black pepper. But you don't season the patty at all? No, if you, if you season the, the meat, when you put it in the grease, the pepper will actually burn and it will change the flavor of the grease. After five minutes in the heat, Felix layers on American cheese, dips it back in for an instant melt, then smoothly stacks a second greasy layer of goodness. There. World famous double double. That looks like a wicked awesome cheeseburger, man. The patty's got those frilly little edges from from frying in there. You can smell the pepper. Whoa! Gotta bring a tear to your mama's eye right there. Well, you better take a bite because while it's hot like that, that's the best way to eat. This is it right here. Right. Well, <laughs> you don't gotta ask me twice. It's not greasy. It's just so well seasoned. The cheese is so creamy. The pickle, the black pepper. Ooh, that is delicious. And the cheese is all stuck to my bun. The patty's all crispy, but well seasoned. The pickle, the onion. I like the sharp, raw onion in there. That's a delicious cheeseburger, my friend. This burger is like time travel. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, it's an old-fashioned burger. Mm. That is a classic Dyer's cheeseburger. Dyer's has checked off my list, but I'm not done yet. My burger bucket list has brought me to a Boston institution, Mr. Bartley's. For over five decades, they've been serving mouth-watering burgers with unique toppings and even more unique names. Every day at lunch hour, Boston burger fanatics line up for a taste of Beantown's favorite patties. The locals here like to say, Bartley's didn't invent the hamburger, they just perfected it. Since opening in Harvard Square back in 1960, Mr. Bartley's has been a family-led landmark that prides itself on the ultimate burger selection. There's over 30 distinct combinations on the menu, all cleverly named after Beantown's most liked and disliked figures. And with more than 40 different toppings to choose from, there's billions more possibilities for you to craft your own unique burger creation. Is it the best burger you've had? It is the best burger I've had. Is this the best burger on the planet or what? The best. You are the best dressed in the crowd, though, I must say. Thank you. Except for maybe. Everybody, Gallagher's in the house! <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's not the real Gallagher, but there is a true celebrity nearby. The restaurant's founder, the original Mr. Bartley himself, is sitting outside taking orders. So, the original Mr. Bartley and the beautiful Mrs. Bartley. So what is it that you do out here? You're sitting out here and what, you, 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 you har harassing people? You drawing yeah. them pictures? Well, I, talk, I like people and I kid with them and talk to them and they feel sorry for me because I'm an old man on a stool. <laughs> What's your favorite hamburger on the menu, Mrs. Bartley? I think the Tom Brady. You just think he's cute, huh? You want to pinch his cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, it's time to get inside this burger shrine and create my own one-of-a-kind burger combo. The kitchen sink's bolted down. <laughs> Other than that, I'll give you anything you want on this. And then I'm off to the Big Apple, where the first U.S. steakhouse with Kobe beef on their menu takes the burger beyond my wildest dream. Melted butter. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, on the food trail to one of the country's most iconic burger joints, Mr. Bartley's. A soft drink, burger, and fries are the most popular restaurant meal in the nation. And for over 50 years, Bartley's has been serving up this winning combination to Boston's burger lovers. This is the man right here, Bill Bartley, the second generation owner of Bartley's Burger Cottage. Mr. Mr. Bartley's Burger Cottage. How popular is this place? I mean, it's unbelievable popular. It's Harvard Square. It's called The Hub. Have you had any legendary characters walk in here? Johnny Cash. That's all you're going to say, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Cash. And, June, and he had June with him. That's a bucket list moment yeah. right there. Before I can see these legendary patties hit the flat top, Bill's got to hit the prep room, where his automated meat machine perfectly blends choice beef into hearty 7-ounce patties at an even 41 degrees. This uniform temperature prevents the heat and friction of his own hands from drawing fat off the meat too soon and ensures every patty retains maximum flavor when lightly seasoned with kosher salt and dropped onto the grill. This is so fresh. This guy was walking around this week. I mean, <laughs> and within the you trim. can tell by the color. I mean, it's got that yeah. beautiful ruby red the way, the way you're, a good ground beef should be. You ever see that brown ground beef in the grocery store? Walk away from that, man. <laughs> stay, stay away. See, most often, we're all used to those splat, squished burgers. It's gonna, you're basically gonna keep this shape all the way through. When it's done right, we do very little to this. You're cooking a burger and you're barbecuing or grilling in your backyard. Don't sit there and mash that burger onto the grill. You push out all the juices, all the natural flavor and fat that you want. There's a weight resting on it, but it's not forcing the, the juices out of it. Bill cooks over 800 patties a day, and at his busiest, he'll have as many as 50 burgers on the grill at one time. But the real magic up this burger wizard sleeve is the endless array of options. You can either build your own with some of the 40 distinct toppings, or choose one of the signature sandwiches already on the menu, like the Democrat, with Swiss cheese, grilled sauerkraut, and Russian dressing, the Viagra, with blue cheese, bacon, lettuce, tomato, or even the Lynn Sanity. Named after Harvard alum and NBA star Jeremy Lin, it's a burger behemoth layered with marinara sauce and covered with mozzarella cheese. We gotta make the Todd Fisher burger. I'm gonna get my own burger on the on menu? The front page. Are you kidding me? Roll out the red cabbage while your hands are. Can I grab a patty? Go for it. All right. So what are we gonna put on this bad boy? Oh, man. How do I start? The kitchen sink's bolted down. <laughs> Other than that, I'll give you anything you want on this. I, I love spice, so I'm thinking something spicy. We got plenty of that. We got some Cajun, jalapenos. Cajun spice, onions, and jalapeno peppers are going to lay my burger's fiery foundation with coleslaw to balance the heat. And I've got something special in store for the penthouse of my burger mansion. I really love a good fried egg on top of my burger. Oh, man. You know, the only thing it needs, it needs a little hot sauce. I'm feeling that. Oh, now it looks like a bloodshot eye. Oh, man, it's been a rough night. Woo! After 10 minutes on the grill and six toppings on the patty, my amazing creation is ready to get knocked off my burger bucket list. Oh, Look at that burger, the Todd Fisher burger. I like how you were... The kid in the candy store. You got, <laughs> you got everything on there, but you weren't the drunk kid in the candy store. <laughs> Shall we get into this? I don't think you're big enough to stop. Are you ready for this? I'm gonna pop the yolk. Oh, look at that. Look at that dripping down onto the burger. Oh, man! I right, just do it! All right, game time! <laughs> mm. That's a good burger. The Chef Todd burger. Perfect medium rare patty with that Cajun spice on there. And the coleslaw is doing exactly what you need it to do. It's kind of taming the heat that's in there. There's a lot of heat in there. The Cajun spice, the jalapeno, the hot sauce. The egg is really the jewel there, though. What makes it so silky on your palate. A couple of dashes of the hot sauce to keep it bright and light. It's awesome. What more do you want than to be called awesome? It's, it's at awesome. Mr. Parley's Burger Cottage. <laughs> that's it, I man. I think we've ever called it. I that. have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> my own burger actually made my bucket list. Building my very own creation worthy of Bartley's menu? This is every burger-loving man's dream. I, I have got menu. to tell the world. I made the menu! Get, your, get a Chef Todd burger. Not only did I get to create and eat a great burger, but I got my name on the legendary Mr. Bartley's menu. 
Next stop on my bucket list is the Big Apple, where one of the nation's oldest steakhouses is making one of the greatest burgers. It's not some little patty of low-grade ground beef. Behold, the Kobe Burger, a massive 20-ounce hamburger hand-formed from the most decadent Kobe-style beef, then grilled to juicy perfection and served on a house-branded brioche bun. It's a must-eat on my burger bucket list. And the only spot to get it is here at the Old Homestead, New York City's definitive steakhouse in the heart of the meatpacking district for over 150 years. I walk into the, this amazing steakhouse thinking for sure the first thing I'm going to see on the table are big steaks. But no, you got beautiful looking burgers in front of you. Kobe burger. What else? Look at this bite you took. You can still see, look at the juice is kind of like just dripping out of that patty. That is a monster. You've got a cute little bite too, just so you know. Thanks. Very well done. <laughs> Where are you guys from? From Venice. From Venice. And you're here for the American hamburger? It's impossible to eat something like this in Italy. That's what we love about America. <laughs> America, you get a real hamburger. <laughs> Coming up, I take hold of heaven on a bun. Enjoy the best burger in the world. <laughs> and later, I'm getting a sneak peek at a patty so exclusive, you can't find it anywhere on the dinner menu. Are you feeling any pressure? <laughs> a little. <laughs> You can grab a burger at almost every one of New York City's 8,000 restaurants. But I've got my stomach set on just one. The Old Homestead Steakhouse. Prime rib, T-bone, filet mignon, they've got it all because Old Homestead has been serving superior cuts of meat since 1868, when the meatpacking district thrived all around them. Although the industry has now left the area, Old Homestead lives on with a menu dedicated to the highest quality meats. To preserve the secrecy of its suppliers, each week an unmarked black truck pulls up to unload nearly 10,000 pounds of prime beef. But it's only the 25-pound whole Kobe chuck that head chef Oscar Martinez uses to create Old Homestead burgers. What makes Kobe special? It's the marbling content in it. Marbling all around the wow. beef. And, and then also you got some fat. Okay. We need that fat. Yeah. That's what's going to make your burger juicy. It's okay. melts in your mouth. It's the flavor is unmatched to any other beef. It's higher than prime. Oh, wow. Higher than prime. I mean, 1% of the world's cattle is prime. This is what makes this Kobe burger amazing. Hands down, this makes the best burger in the world. Dude, okay. you were like Conan the Barbarian with that knife, right? Look at this scimitar right here. <laughs> Even in my years of being in the kitchen, I have never actually gone through the process of saying, this is eight pounds to two pounds. You don't just assume it's 80-20. I mean, you literally are going to, to the scale to get scale. eight pounds of beef and two pounds of fat. Homestead's precise ratio goes through the grinder for a uniform blend and then gets sprinkled with old Homestead's secret season. But the privilege of shaping these special patties each day, that's given to just one man. Our patty doctor, Lassan. Sir, it is a pleasure to meet you. If this gentleman gets sick, you're not getting a burger here at the homestead. <laughs> We're not serving any burgers. That's it. it wow, it, that's a lot of pressure, my friend. With 15 years of experience, Lasan deserves a patty PhD because only he has the surgeon's touch needed to handle the high-end meat with flawless consistency for optimal flavor across every Kobe beef burger homestead has ever served. It's like you're playing the drums, right? Little, little bongos are happening. <laughs> this is great. Look at this. That is a perfect Kobe patty. After the seasoned beef marinates for two hours, it's out of the fridge and onto the oil rub grill, where Oscar sets the patty to cook to an even medium rare. Wow, look at that. Perfect crosshatch. You can see a little bit of nice dark char. My mouth is watering right now. Next, I melted butter huh. that I like to brush the burger with. The burger itself didn't have enough of that 20% fat. Now we've got a little butter. 
So now do you stick a thermometer to tell me that it's no, done? Or? Oh, okay. never puncture your meat at Don't all. Punk That's good advice for everyone. Don't puncture your meat. Resting the patty for five minutes allows the succulent juices to cool down and soak in in preparation for Old Homestead's final stamp of burger approval. Just right on top. Right on top. Steady. Steady. Woo! Nice. <laughs> the OH, the Old Homestead, right there. Plated beside tater tots and two sauces, homemade chipotle ketchup and champagne-infused mustard, the old Homestead 20-ounce Kobe burger is about to get crossed off my bucket list. I actually cannot wait any longer. Enjoy the best burger in the world. <laughs> mm. Mm. The perfect bite. I taste the butter that was coating this thing. You taste the rich, decadent meat. You taste that really deep, well-marbled fat that's in there. The salty, the crust, the sweet, beefy kind of smoke that we get from that, the nuttiness from the butter. Pure Kobe, that is an absolutely magnificent burger. This is exactly why this 20 ounce Kobe beef patty was on my burger bucket list. Mm. <laughs> that is a thing of beauty. Wow. There's one final stop on my burger bucket list. A patty so unique, so special, so intensely delicious, there's only 24 made each Can night. Anybody tell me what time it is? Yeah! This, my burger maniacs, is the moment we have all been waiting for. The United States truly is a burger nation. We invented the hamburger, and God bless us, we perfected it. I've tasted over 100 years of burger-making tradition, from the simple unadorned original to cheese-covered experiments and quality-controlled selections. Now the last stop on my bucket list takes inspiration from America's rich patty-making past and brings it to a whole new level of sandwich perfection. I'm not looking for fast food burger quantity, I need all-American burger quality. So I've traveled to Holman and Finch Public House in Atlanta, Georgia, where every night at exactly 10 o'clock, they serve up what many believe to be the best burger in America to an anxiously awaiting crowd of burger fanatics. Is it the best burger you've ever waited an hour or more for? I think it's the only burger I've ever waited an hour for. <laughs> Since opening in 2009, Holman & Finch Public House has offered a unique twist on Southern comfort. But I'm here for the item purposefully left off the menu. The griddle-cooked, onion and pickle-topped double patty cheeseburger. With a focus on flawless ingredients and a grill wide enough for only a dozen burgers at once, Holman & Finch serves just 24 burgers each night in a first-come, first-served battle royale that's got everyone asking. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your burger is? That's it, 24 burgers, that's all we get. And I'm having like 22, so you better be ready to rock. But we only ordered two. I'll arm wrestle you if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you tell me about the burger? It's just very juicy, simple. It's not it's nothing fancy. They're not trying to overcomplicate anything. All this um, magnificent food, and we're all waiting for a friggin' cheeseburger. At 10 p.m. Prep work for this coveted creation is already underway, so I'm going to chew the fat with restaurant chef and owner, Linton Hopkins. I have traveled the country waiting for this burger. Well, the whole idea of this burger is to not dumb it down. It's about details and execution. It's choice of beef is everything, so it's a mixture of brisket and chuck. Interesting combination to the brisket in there. What's well, the purpose of that? Uh, it's the fat content. We went through 12 different grinds of the classic 100% chuck. Okay. It really has the perfect fat, lean balance. Linton demands the one-of-a-kind meat mix gets a double grind to ensure perfect, even flavoring. A quality so crucial, he wants it in every single bite. A lot of people 
If they see a large number of burgers, they'll, they'll do vertical. Well, we say you season in circles, right? Because it's a, the details about salt hitting all of those. So if you geek out on every single detail like that. I'm glad you said that because I was just going, I love it. He's such a food geek. <laughs> well, of course. We make the ketchup, the mustard, the pickles. We slice the cheese in house. We bake the bun. Everything from scratch because it should be different. It should be unique. Each restaurant should have a, a stamp of home. This is Atlanta, Georgia, Holman and Finch Burger. People come in hours ahead of time to place an order for each night's limited run of burgers. With time running out, I have got to get mine. I want my burger. You got one left. You got one burger left. Put my name on it. The pressure. There's like one minute to burger time. After traveling near and far, the final burger on my bucket list is ready to be born. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 10 o'clock here at Home and Fish, and that can mean only one thing. Can anybody tell me what time it is? All right, so it's burger time. The 24 patties have been slapped down, seasoned on both sides. Smell that beefy fabulousness. The buns are all set out. The pickles are staged, ready to, to be placed in the right spot. And now, Chef has begun to, to make the flip. I feel like a sports commentator. He's at half court now, working back down the lane, making sure that all the burgers are flipped. Are you feeling any pressure? <laughs> a little. <laughs> Paper thin slices of red onion. Slapping the cheese down like you're dealing cards of American cheese. Sealing those onions in there. After three minutes of heat on each side of the patty, the first dozen double-stacked burgers are assembled and ready for delivery. The Holman and Finch burger. Double cheese, onions capsulated in the middle, house-made pickles, house-made toasted bun. I am oozing with excitement right now. All right, ready? Do it. Game time. Do it. Get in there. Now you hit it. It's a perfect burger. It's a perfect burger. That is the all-American cheeseburger. Because there's so much juice. Perfectly salted beef. The pickle's nice. It's a nice little, little tart on the edge there. But I like that house-made mustard. Nice and punchy. That good? And that's like, it's like a neon light. Come and eat me. I'm going back in for this. Mm. That's a testament. That is a great burger. Homemade bun sets it off. It does. I think. That makes it an absolutely perfect cheeseburger. Yeah. Every single piece of this cheeseburger is done with the most passion that you could possibly do. You quite literally right? taste the passion. You cheer. Cheer, cheer, cheer. I've traveled thousands of miles on my burger quest and tasted some of the finest oh. grilled by some of the greatest. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. And as our nation evolves, so does our favorite food. And burgerholics across the country are pushing the envelope on a journey to perfection. Toppings used to mean ketchup or mustard. Today, nothing is off limits. That's the beauty of the burger. It's not just delicious, it's distinctly American. Constantly changing and evolving, always there for us. A food monument to the American way.